yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Dear Ambassador Lauber, dear Gloria, dear Felix, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all, physically or most, mostly, as Felix has said, virtually, at the Maison de la Paix, which is home of the Graduate Institute. The Geneva Academy and the Geneva Human Rights Platform are part of the broad family of the Graduate Institute. And as the new director of the Institute, I'm very happy to be able to be here this morning at the beginning of this yearly meeting of the platform. Let me extend a number, a number of warm thanks. First, thank you to Gloria, to Felix, and to all the team of the Academy. First, for all the important work they are doing on a regular basis, but also obviously for organizing this event in these very particular circumstances and organizing those hybrid events we know is even more difficult than organizing you know, physically, uh, physical presence events or uh, online presence. So thank you for all of this. I would also like to reaffirm today my deep appreciation of our close collaboration in that context, in the context of the Geneva Academy and the platform, uh, but also elsewhere with the University of Geneva, a collaboration which, if anything, will only be reinforced in the coming years, as you know, we've discussed it uh, recently with uh, um, Rector uh, Yves Lukiger. Let me thank also Mr. Michael O'Flaherty, who is director of the EU Fundamental Rights Agency and who has accepted to do the keynote for today's event. And naturally, let me mention the importance, of, in the presence of uh, Ambassador Lober, the importance of the support of our cantonal and federal authorities, without which we would not be able to ensure our missions. And this is true for the Academy, but it's also naturally true for us at the Institute as a whole. For the last eight months, the pandemic has been reducing and enclosing our world. And this is precisely why I would say we've never needed as much as today the open and collaborative projection that are at the heart of international Geneva. For the last eight months also, the pandemic and its management have had sometimes drastic consequences for our human rights. And this is precisely why we have never been so much in need of science-based discussions on trade-offs and new forms of challenges that are threatening some of the important progresses that have marked at least part of the 20th century when we, uh, when we think about human rights. There's no better place to be having those discussions than in the context of the, uh, this annual event of the Geneva Human Rights Platform here in the Maison de la Paix, well named, so closely connected to international Geneva itself, an integral part of Geneva and Switzerland. Human rights, we know, are moving targets. They are aspirational goals, more um, important than ever, and probably more in risk than ever. To strengthen and to reinforce them, we need to create deeper connections across regimes and between layers from the global to the most local. This is where the expertise of the Geneva Human Rights Platform is particularly key. And this meeting will focus precisely, as the title indicates, on the connectivity challenges between regional and global human rights mechanisms. I wish I could stay for the whole meeting. Unfortunately, I have a series of meetings lined up uh, for the rest of the day, so I will leave a bit early, and I apologize for that. I wish you very interesting and rich debates, and thank you very much for all of you who are here, either in the room or virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, <coughs> Ms. Selvin. Thank you for mentioning the, the welcome place also of the Academy and the Geneva Human Rights Platform in the ecosystem, in the family of the Graduate Institute. It's my pleasure to hand over now first uh, to Ambassador Lauber, uh, Ambassador and Permanent uh, Representative of Switzerland to the United Nations Office in Geneva. Uh, Ambassador Lauber, it's a pleasure to have you with us, even if uh, you're the first virtual speaker, but actually you're also in the majority of the speakers who will join us today online. So the floor is yours, Ambassador. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, Madam Director, dear colleagues, um, I only recently came back to Geneva and I uh, find myself discovering a whole new range of fresh initiatives and institutions also that are here to promote informal and uh, informed 
exchanges and human rights. The Geneva Human Rights Platform offers such a space for different stakeholders to debate topical issues as well as challenges to the Geneva-based human rights system. And I want to take this opportunity to commend the role of the Geneva Academy through this platform and its important contribution to the strengthening of uh, the human rights treaty body. During my previous function, before I came to Geneva uh, as a permanent representative of Switzerland to the United Nations in New York, I worked on the treaty body strengthening process and I recognize how important your contribution has been over the years, including for the most recent Morocco-Switzerland co-facilitation. Dear colleagues, the proper functioning of the United Nations human rights institutions and mechanisms is a priority for Switzerland. This is even more important today in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. While the crisis obviously is far from over, it seems fair to say that the United Nations human rights system has reacted quite well so far. Let me recall a few examples. There is, for instance, the guidance of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights on human rights compliant responses to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the Secretary General's policy brief on COVID-19 and human rights entitled, We Are All In This Together. Both of these appeals and briefs to member states came very early on in the crisis. There is the active role of the mechanisms of the Human Rights Council, including the special procedures and of the, human, uh, the UN Human Rights Treaty Bodies. They highlighted the human rights implications of the COVID-19 pandemic, and they offered guidance to states on how to ensure a human rights compliant response to the pandemic. There's also the ability of the Human Rights Council to be flexible and to adapt to the new situation so as to carry out its mandate of promoting and protecting human rights, even under the current difficult circumstances. It is true that the Human Rights Council suspended its 43rd meeting in March, but it did continue its work through informal conversation with the High Commissioner and with the special procedures. It also developed new working methods for the negotiation of a presidential statement on COVID-19, and it resumed in-personal meetings by 15 June, that is long before any other intergovernmental body in the UN system. None of this would have been possible without the dedication and determination of many, of many delegates. Many of you are in the room today, and I want to, in particular to include my own colleagues from the Swiss mission and uh, tell them how grateful I am for their dedication. I also want to thank once again the President of the Human Rights Council, Ambassador Tichy Pisselberger from Austria, for her tireless efforts and her superior diplomatic skills. The underlying message is a powerful one. The Human Rights Council is the principal human rights body of the United Nations, and it must not be stopped by this pandemic. The Council has to continue to fulfill its mandate, and it has to address the human rights aspect of COVID-19. Dear colleagues, the Geneva Human Rights Platform decided to devote its annual conference to regional and global human rights mechanisms. Despite the responsiveness of the UN human rights system, there is genuine and legitimate concern regarding the impact of COVID-19 on the work of the United Nations treaty body system. Most of the treaty bodies have continued to meet virtually, but they also scaled down their activities. Some have focused more time on individual complaints and taken some key decisions. Others have devoted time to advance important projects. And here I take the opportunity to commend the Human Rights Committee, especially its rapporteur, Christoph Heinz, for the adoption of General Comment 37 on Article 21 of the ICCPR on the right to peaceful assembly. However, the UN treaty bodies have not maintained their core activity, which is the review of states parties reports. Switzerland is among the countries that were supposed to present their reports to the Committee on Enforced Disappearances and the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination in 2020. We are currently waiting for rescheduling 
and for information on possible future modalities should the restrictions on in-person meetings continue to apply in 2021. It is important and urgent to find practical solutions for the UN treaty bodies to carry out their mandates despite the pandemic. I believe that the exchanges like the one today are an excellent opportunity to identify such solutions. So I look forward to the result of your discussions. I wish you productive discussions and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador Lauber. Thank you for your introductory words and for recalling that in view of the announcement of further restrictive measures, it's still very crucial that actually the human rights system must not stop and continue. So I hope, as you say, with this conference, we could contribute. I would like to hand over now the floor to the director of the Academy, uh, Professor Gloria Gagioli, for her welcome. Gloria, over to you. Thank you very much, Felix. Dear co-panelists, Dear participants, first of all, I would like to warmly thank my fellow opening speakers, the Graduate Institute Director, Professor Sal, and Mr. Ambassador Lauber for being with us today and for introducing this annual conference of the Geneva Human Rights Platform, which is of particular importance to the Geneva Academy of International Humanitarian Law and Human Rights. I am Gloria Gajoli, the Director of the Geneva Academy, and uh, an international law professor at the University of Geneva. It is my great pleasure to open the second annual conference of the Geneva Human Rights Platform. My collaborators, Mr. Felix Kirschmeier, Executive Director of the Geneva Human Rights Platform, Mr. Domenico Zippoli, researcher, and Mrs. Charlotte Day, project assistant for the platform, worked with a lot of enthusiasm and dedication to organize this event, and I would like to thank them for that. I would like also to thank our partner organizations coming, coming from academia, the civil society, and the UN, who were actively engaged in co-organizing the different panel discussions of the day. My sincere thanks go especially to the Paris Human Rights Center, the CCPR Center, the Center for International Environmental Law, the Center for Reproductive Rights, Earth Justice, Essex University, FIAN International, the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, the International Commission of Jurists, the International Service for Human Rights, the Global Initiative on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the OHCHR, UN Habitat, the UNCAC Civil Society Coalition. I'm deeply convinced uh, that the Geneva Academy is the ideal institution to host the Geneva Human Rights Platform. This allows for mutual benefits in terms of research and outreach. This conference provides additional proof of this. Indeed, the Geneva Academy has conducted substantive research in relation to the overarching theme of this conference, which is connectivity between regional and global human rights mechanisms. The selection of topics for the various panels is notably inspired from thorough research undertaken by the Academy. Please let me refer in particular to the following research. Thank you very much. First, there is the research project and the 2019 publication on treaty bodies individual communication procedures. This research drew inspiration from the system of the European Court of Human Rights in order to outline a series of key recommendations to improve the handling of individual communications and the role of the OHCHR as a secretariat. The second one, the research uh, was conducted in collaboration with the CCPR Center and the OHCHR on human rights and anti-corruption. This led to the publication in 2019 of a practitioner's guide and strategic advisory, uh, advocacy tool on how to best make use of the human rights system to address corruption cases. The third one, the research, this research was conducted last year in relation to the Human Rights Week on whether and how could a human rights mechanism 
play a role in the implementation of international humanitarian law. These are just a few examples of Geneva Academy research that inform some of the panels and working groups of today's conference. All our research projects that are of interest to the Geneva Human Rights Platform are available on our website under the heading Resources. I now give the floor to Mr. Felix Kirschmeier, who will present the program of the day and the modalities of the hybrid conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloria. Thank you, Ms. Sell. Thank you, Ambassador Lauber, for the opening remarks. And again, welcome to all of you here. So I think uh, the Switzerland just announced uh, more restrictive measures. We see COVID numbers rising here and around. So actually of the 70 participants who have registered to be here in the room, I see we're slightly less. Um, so we do have, as I mentioned, uh, the biggest part of the audience joining us online throughout the day for the different panels and working groups. Uh, let me just briefly uh, run you through the program, actually, before I'll hand over to Michael O'Flaherty for the keynote address to this meeting. The Geneva Human Rights Platform is part of two distinguished uh, or distinct Geneva ecosystems, the academic community via its roots at the Geneva Academy and the network of Geneva platforms on the various topics politically addressed by International Geneva. In particular, the Geneva Human Rights Platform is a mechanisms hub focusing on the functioning, efficiency, and effectiveness of the Geneva-based international human rights mechanisms. Our connection to the UN, to NGOs, and to the intergovernmental scene allows us to identify most pertinent issues. In this perspective, uh, the advisory board of the Geneva Human Rights Platform is equally crucial, and I would like to uh, acknowledge the participation of our advisory board members, Virginia Bas Gomez, Sarah Cleveland, Milun Kotari, Florence simbiri Jaoko and Rodrigo Oprimni in the preparation and actually also in the conducting of this um, meeting today. I'd also like to thank in absence the former board member, Ambassador Zellweger, the former permanent representative of Switzerland to Geneva for his input to the preparation of this year's conference. The aim of the con annual conference is to explore, as was mentioned, the connectivity among regional and UN human rights bodies and mechanisms. Last year, we focused on the connectivity between different UN human rights mechanisms. This time, the idea is to broaden the, uh, the perspective. And next year, to give you already an idea, we think to turn more into supporting the practicalities of implementation through national systems. As mentioned by Gloria Gagioli, the conference reflects also the development of research and activities undertaken throughout the year and allows us to share those with a wider audience. Now the setup of this conference, and I mentioned that at least three times now, is hybrid. Uh, it's a webinar in the morning and actually it's fully interactive Zoom meetings in the afternoon. So there were detailed uh, notes, uh, technical notes distributed uh, via email to all participants. Uh, we will do our best to be inclusive and engage with the online participants just as much as with those in the room. So please do make yourselves seen in the morning. It will be especially through the chat function. Uh, in the afternoon, you can get, raise your hands and directly intervene in the working groups. Uh, those online, again, please do refer to the technical support staff via the chat. And if you have any questions, write to the events at Geneva Academy address to, to sort out any potential problems. Uh, those offline, so those with us, just do speak to us. This ancient way of communication is rather efficient, even if we forget about it sometimes now in COVID times. Adapting to the regulations, we need to ask you to wear masks, expect, expect, except when speaking right now here, um, throughout uh, all the time when you're in this building. And uh, we have also not distributed any materials for handout for that. So otherwise we would have brought a lot of publications and flyers, but as mentioned, you'll find them all on our website. Uh, we actually are unfortunately not allowed even for those in the room to serve you coffee breaks uh, because of those restrictions. So uh, very much restrictions. So as you saw in the latest version of the program, we just changed them to breathing breaks, go out, take off your mask, take a good breath of, breath of fresh air. So it's breathing breaks instead.